Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So we got another batch of meatloaf here. I think this is number 117. So got some cool stuff. Um, flea market finds. Um, some new tools for the shop. A um, little um, kind of follow up on my Richard King scraping class experience. So talk about that just a little bit. Um, the other thing, I uh, just want to thank all you guys. Uh, I had asked for a volunteer micrometer in the last meatloaf to uh, relap the anvils and I got, uh, <laughs> I would call it a kind of an overwhelming response so uh, um, I think I got a, a good volunteer and it's got a really good story that goes with the, uh, with the micrometer so um, we're going to get that micrometer in here and we're going to do a little bit of lapping but I just want to thank all the folks that kind of stepped up and, uh, and um, asked about the uh, volunteering on, on micrometer so uh, that was cool and uh, so we'll we'll be lapping a micrometer soon let's just put it that way and then uh, uh, there's a lot of folks that kind of uh, uh, really are jonesing for one of these little mini surface plates and uh, so I had ordered uh, uh, 150 of those and they're all gone okay um, so they went that quick so I don't even have them yet so uh, guys that uh, have put deposits down and some have paid in full uh, uh, thank you very much I appreciate that that helps out the uh, the my little operation here and, uh, and keeps the videos coming and uh, keeps the tools happening and all that neat stuff so I do appreciate that and we're gonna do it again so don't worry guys uh, you know there'll be more of these plates it seems to be a really popular thing uh, and I'll order some for the bash for those folks that are uh, going to go to the bash. I'll have some at the bash available too. So anyway, let's uh, let's go look at some cool stuff. I got some really neat stuff to show you guys, and uh, it's your typical meatloaf. It's a mix of uh, odd and wonderful things. So let's check it out. All right. So this is actually uh, part of a Craigslist find, and uh, it has kind of a interesting story that goes with it. Um, I had responded to a, uh, a guy on uh, Craigslist had some stuff posted uh, that was of interest and the, the thing the main thing that I uh, went to look at I actually I actually bought it and it's over in another area in the shop we'll look at it in a second but you know you know when you go out and and I encourage you guys to go out and meet meet folks uh, that have uh, tools and equipment and things like that and just uh, just chat with them and uh, you meet some really really interesting guys or folks um, and these things were kind of uh, I would say they were bonus items so I bought the a little grinding machine from him and you'll see that like I said in a sec and you know we got to talking and uh, you know the classic question you know what else you got right and um, he had a little shop that was uh, um, kind of behind his barn and he ran a little business out of there. Anyway, we started chatting about his business, and uh, he was just clearing it all out. He didn't want to mess with it anymore. And uh, so, anyway, uh, these little bonus items were kind of cool. Let's just talk about them real quick. Um, this is something he made when he was in a, an apprentice, I think. And he was an apprentice um, out at Alameda Naval Air Station. So he worked uh, for the Navy for a while. And uh, I don't remember if he said he was in the Navy or not. But anyway, this is a little toolmaker's flat that caught my eye because it's got a nice, uh, uh, I just kind of like the way that he did the groove here. Um, it needs a regrind. It looks like it's been used as a little anvil or something, but it, uh, it needs a regrind and a lap, which uh, I know somebody that could probably help me with that. Um, so that's that. And this is, what is that? Oh, it's about four inch diameter. And like I said, it's got this nice recess so that it, uh, it makes it easy to pick up and move around so um, if I if I were to do another one of these I do like Robin did and uh, cut a rectangular recess in there so that you can clamp you can use small clamps on the rim so I wouldn't use a tapered edge like that but uh, anyway still still a nice item there um, the next bit was uh, now these are just some hardened blocks that he had but they're a form factor that I just didn't happen to have uh, uh, any in um, and these are it's about seven eighths of an inch by inch and a half by you know four or whatever it is and uh, for our metric friends here it's uh, 
38 millimeters by 22 millimeters by 100 millimeters. So uh, um, just a, a nice set of them, and uh, I'll clean those up, and you know maybe give them a fresh grind or something like that. But it's just nice to have uh, you know set up blocks uh, around the shop that, uh, that you can uh, you can do different things with, and uh, and when you find them and they're already ground and heat treated. You're, you know, seven tenths of the way there, uh, or nine tenths of the way there, um, to having some nice blocks. And then this last thing here, um, it's a little um, cast iron surface plate. So this kind of, I took this to the Richard King class, and I was gonna, you know, if I had enough time, I was gonna, I was gonna scrape this. Um, and it's not so heavy that you can't pick it up and flip it over for spotting it so that's one of the <laughs> one of the items uh, that you gotta you know kind of put in perspective is you know some of these things are heavy and you have to handle them a lot so ideally you know you'd have a little hoist or something like that and you could flip it over and then spot it and then flip it back and then do your scraping something like that this one's pretty cool uh, it's got a maker's mark on it let's uh, we'll pop down and we'll take a look at the maker's mark all right, there's the maker's mark. Um, this is Machine Products Corporation, uh, Detroit, Michigan. And I, I actually, I, I haven't heard of those. Uh, maybe uh, somebody out there has heard of these folks. Um, but it's a real nicely made uh, little cast iron plate. And then here's the best part, I think, is, you know, I think he found it at the Navy Yard there. <laughs> Now the top's been planed. It was planed at one time, and um, and then eventually I will uh, rescrape this and uh, and make a, a hand scraped little uh, surface plate out of it. So anyway, that's uh, that's pretty cool. Actually, let's I'm gonna flip it over, and we can look at the uh, look at the ribbing on the back. You guys can see the ribbing. That's pretty heavily ribbed. And this one's got six feet, which is a little bit odd, and um, but uh, it seems to be pretty pretty well built. So, so this was the this was the listing that um, I responded to um, on Craigslist, and uh, he had this uh, this guy I met. He had this deckel grinder, uh, and this is an SO grinder. And what this is is this is a single lip uh, cutter grinder, so you can grind. Um, they're kind of split. Some people call them D bits. Uh, with they're split, and then you can put you can form profiles into the uh, into the cutting edges, and then do the reliefs. And you can grind all kinds of other stuff in these too. Uh, has a little collet system, and um, if you guys haven't seen these, has a little collet system, and it uses a weird collet. Um, and uh, you can uh, very handy thing. Now I have one of these, and you guys have probably seen a couple of videos of mine. Um, I kind of bought this on spec. Um, you know, these don't come up very often on Craigslist. And um, in fact, I was surprised that he still had it because it had been listed for a few days at least. Well, when I went and looked at it, oops, sorry. When I went and looked at it, you know, it's, it doesn't actually, it doesn't look that rough if you've seen a lot of these, right? But there were some turnoffs, I think, for uh, people that might have been looking at it. Uh, one of them was, uh, um, you know, I had some kind of sketchoid, uh, uh, sketchoid uh, control wiring here. So uh, anyway, it's got a little dodgy there, but uh, that, that's all very easy stuff to fix. It's been refitted with a single phase motor, which is kind of nice, uh, and it runs quietly. Now the spindle bearings are readily available for these and they're easy to change, so that's not even a big deal. The, the main thing I think that was a turnoff is this particular pivot here was seized. It was, uh, um, it was dang it, I keep hitting that light, sorry. Um, it was locked up and it wouldn't turn, so I think a lot of people just thought it was just frozen and rusted. So I made a little clamp to clamp the shaft and I was able, you know, clamped it firmly and I was able to you know, squirt some croil in there and uh, uh, and free it up. So, um, actually, uh, another YouTuber is going to end up with this. And, um, like I said, I bought it on spec. And um, 
So you, this will show up in somebody else's videos. I'm not going to say who's right now, but uh, uh, I'm sure he will make good use of this, and uh, he's he's happy to get it. Price was pretty good too. Now it did come with uh, came with a bunch of collets, and uh, for those of you guys that that have these, the original Deckel collets, and these are Deckel collets. Um, these are ninety bucks a piece. Okay, and there was a bunch of collets. And then it had a couple of square collets, so you can do like lathe tool bits and stuff like that. Well, those are almost 300 bucks a piece uh, for original decal collets. Now, you can buy knockoff ones, and they're, and they're fine. And, uh, but, uh, you know, just for the collets, it was worth the price that I paid for the whole thing. So anyway, that's what I, you know, it's worth going out, looking at stuff, kicking the tires on things. You get to meet some folks, and you don't have to buy something, uh, but it's always, it's almost always fun to look. Okay, so Deckel single lip cutter grinder. One of the things I forgot to mention uh, about this guy that I met uh, when I bought the grinder is he he was running a business out of this uh, this shop in his backyard, basically, which is kind of a neat thing. So he had built a, a whole separate building back there, and he. Would, you know, he would bring customers over, and uh, he had a, you know, a little office back there in the shop. And um, but one of the other things that he had was he had a display case, um, and uh, you know, just your traditional glass display case with a bunch of, um, you know, I, I always call them uh, brag cabinets, right? So bragging about, uh, um, you know, the kinds of work that you can do and whatnot. But typically, these cabinets are where the all the out of spec cool looking parts end up. But what he had in there uh, is he had a, um, a little tiny micrometer. And I'm gonna show you a picture of that right now. And that little micrometer, uh, it, it immediately caught my eye. I looked at it and I asked if I could take a look at it. He said, oh yeah, sure, so he brought it out. Well, the story on that little sucker is that uh, um, his grandfather made that. Uh, it's just handmade. And, um, you know, it's just, I think that's probably one of the smallest micrometers I've ever seen other than uh, or a functioning micrometer, I should say. So it even had graduations on it and everything. And uh, but just a very interesting little piece there, and uh, uh, you know, I complimented him on it and all that. And uh, but it was just fun to to talk with him about it and uh, to actually hold that and uh, and check it out. So uh, pretty neat. So anyway, Robert, thank you very much for uh, if you're watching this video. Uh, thanks for uh, wheeling and dealing with me, and thanks for letting me uh, hold your grandfather's micrometer. Thank you. Okay, so these are uh, these are the flea market finds here. And um, I, uh, uh, I haven't been to the flea market in a while, but uh, we went this Sunday and, and uh, picked up some goodies. So uh, this, is, this is most of the haul. I got one more item that's, uh, that's kind of off camera. We'll show that separately. Um, but there's some interesting bits here. Let's, let's just kind of go through them and uh, kind of neat. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and then uh, we'll talk about each one of these uh, uh, real quickly and kind of go through it. All right, so this is the last find of the day here, and I, the guy was he was hollering, uh, everything here is a dollar, and uh, and anyway, I kind of slowed down and uh, and took a look, and these kind of stood out at me. Um, they're longer than normal. Uh, these are these are actually fairly long. Um, you know, it's just slip joint pliers here, and these are almost ten inches long, or uh, two hundred and fifty millimeters almost. Um, and they're Crescent, it's a name brand, and they're pretty brand new. Um, they, you know, and what I always look at is I look at the jaws to see how chattered they are, and these look pretty good. Now these are kind of interesting because they're really long, and the, the handles, when you really squeeze on them, the, you can actually feel them flex a little bit, which is actually kind of nice and at some level, is that uh, they have a little bit of cushion to them. Um, it's just a, it's just a subtlety these large ones that I've noticed over the years. But uh, um, you know these are great for picking up hot stuff when you're welding and things like that. They're just kind of general purpose, uh, uh, you know, for 
for precision uh, instrument adjustment, uh, micrometer, uh, um, you know, calibration, you know, run of the mill jobs like that. <laughs> anyway, for a dollar, uh, I said, fine, I'll throw it in my bag. So that's, that's one thing. Um, this is pretty cool. This is a, uh, it's kind of like a garland um, um, sp uh, split rawhide hammer, but the head's not split. But this has copper, uh, it has copper jaw or pucks in it here. And the handle's in pretty good shape. So I think this will clean up real nicely here. And uh, um, it's got a good weight and it's got a nice handle once again. A little thick, a little fat, but uh, um, kind of a good length uh, with a, uh, a pretty, okay, it's got a, just a shade of a wiggle in there. No big deal. And I don't know what that is. It's a solvent or something they got uh, they got on it. I don't know. Anyway, pretty cool little hammer. Uh, no branding on it, but uh, um, that I can see yet. But just a nice little hammer. Uh, this one's this one's pretty cool. Um, so how great is it when you know? Usually when we go to the flea market, uh, my wife and I we go to the flea market. We kind of walk separately because we have kind of different paces. Uh, going to the flea market um, and then we meet up at this kind of a central place and she goes oh hey I got uh, I got a present for you and I'm like oh really and um, so she says close your eyes and put your hand out so I do and this is what she puts in it so she bought me a uh, it's a snap-on inch and a sixteenth uh, combination wrench and um, you know and I I have one um, um, I don't know if I have a snap on actually, but I, anyway, I already have one, but I said, well, what do you have to give for that? Anyway, she said 10 bucks and I said, uh, that's a pretty damn good deal. So, uh, anyway, Mrs. Ox is, uh, is, uh, shopping for tools for me too. So how, how awesome is that? That's pretty damn good. I think so. <laughs> so brand new, uh, and it's got somebody's, uh, somebody's initials in it. BW, B. BGV, BGV or BW, I'm not sure which, but, uh, oh, there it is, uh, BRW, oh, that's interesting, that doesn't look like an R, because he's got it marked there again, so, anyway, nice wrench, so, uh, uh, 10 bucks, so, okay, so this one, now, I don't know about you guys, but uh, I, I, I've always kind of liked these kind of safety protected uh, little toggle switches, right, and, when I when I first bought it, I go okay. It's just a three pole. Um, it's a nice it's a nice switch with a uh, with a protected uh, um, toggle, right? So I go okay. Yeah, I'll get it, right? And I don't know. It was I bought this. Is this the same guy? I think it was the same guy. This this and this. What else did I get from him? Oh, and that uh, and that was that was twenty bucks. Okay, and I'll show you these in a sec here. But this one, actually, I, when I pulled it out of my backpack, uh, I looked at it, but here's what's cool. It says bailout on it. So I don't know, okay, so maybe somebody can help me on that. This is some kind of aircraft thing. That, uh, this particular vendor had a bunch of military stuff and like, you know, electronics hardware and things like that that had that military government look to it. Um, trust me, I know what that stuff looks like. Um, but anyway, this says bailout, and uh, so you know, I don't know, bailout. <laughs> I have no idea um, uh, how that uh, uh, or how that functions. So what's the what's the bailout switch for? So maybe uh, one of you military buffs out there can kind of tell me. But uh, it's a nice switch, nice and stiff. Uh, I'm sure they. The government paid a, a pretty penny to get this. I know these protective covers are they're thirty dollars uh, just to get the cover that goes on the toggle switch. So this one's got an AN, uh, which is an aeronautical certification num uh, serial number on it. So yeah, what is that? Three zero two one three B AN three zero two one three B. So anyway, that was cool. The bailout switch. All right. So this next little group here, um, I think all these came together here. Um, I saw this and I picked it up and uh, it's it's an air die grinder, okay? It says 18,000 RPM on it. But what caught my eye on this particular one is it has a rear exhaust here. And 
and it's it's a large diameter barrel here okay and now and I'm not sure if this is 100% true but uh, my experience has been the larger the diameter of the barrel the more powerful the tool is okay because um, the little turbine that spins in there is a larger diameter so you get a little bit more leverage along the center line so uh, it, it, it's a more powerful tool um, and then anything that has a dedicated rear exhaust with a you know a hose barb on it so that you can take that away I, I believe that's a professional tool now Unfortunately, the uh, the label is is kind of missing. Uh, it's you know it's been rubbed off. So you know, note to uh, uh, you know tool makers and uh, whatnot is when you brand your tools, make sure you do it in a way that uh, doesn't get worn off. Okay. So if you put a sticker on, guess what? Nobody's gonna know what your tool is. Okay. They got that. They got that part right. Made in the U.S. Right. But. Uh, uh, if I wanted to order parts or something for this, I would. Uh, it would be a, a wild search. Now this thing is. Let's see if you can hear it. It doesn't. It doesn't sound that great. So it probably needs a little bit of help. But let's uh, let's plug it into some air and uh, and see what uh, kind of noise it'll make. Let's start out with this here. I'm just going to put a couple of drops of air tool oil in there. I got all the stuff right here. I'm kind of ready to go. I don't have to hunt around for it. No, I'm not putting uh, dope or tape on there right now. I just want to snug that up. Let me grab the air hose. We'll give this thing a little spin and see what, it's, ouch, and see what it does here. No leaks. Yeah, I would say that that's uh, working. Okay, well I'd say that's a success. It's got a uh, a Jacobs Chuck that somebody put on there. I doubt that that was a that was original. So we'll take a look at that and uh, um, figure out what's what's supposed to be on there. Or get a Chuck key for it at least. So anyway, that was pretty cool. Cool fun. Looks like it works too. Um, next one here from that same guy, brand new, never been used, Proto punches. And not like I need them, but uh, you know, when you find bargains like this, you know, I'll meet some kiddo somewhere or whatever, and then uh, you know, you, you pass this stuff along, right? Um, oh, it's got some uh, some markings on that. Anyway, these things don't look like they've ever been used. So uh, a little pin punch, uh, tapered uh, tapered punch. Big tapered punch and then the center punch. It's a nice little set. So, you know, maybe this goes in the travel box or something like that, right? Although my travel box already has uh, some stuff like this in it. But, uh, you know, I think, like I said, this was all $20 for all this. So, figure it out, right? Um, yep. All right. This is the next one here. Let's zoom in on this because this is pretty cool. This is really what I stopped at this guy's booth for. All right, so what this is here, if you haven't seen one of these, this is a this is a gasket cutter. Okay, it's for cutting um, it's for cutting round gaskets, uh, you know, like flange gaskets and uh, you know things you know things of that nature. Um, now I haven't really looked through this yet. It's got it looks like I don't think it's ever been used. Uh, there's the cutting blade right there, and feels pretty sharp to me and then you put uh, you put various pivots in there That's, uh, these are the pivots and those probably slide right in there yep okay depending on what you're doing different flavors of pivots like so um, and then um, let's see this is pretty neat here so if you got um, uh, bolt circles uh, to do you can uh, you can use these little notches to uh, 
I guess through that, right, to help you lay out the uh, the bolt circle, so you can kind of do that uh, on the fly too, which is kind of neat. And then what's in here? Spearhead, genuine parts. This is probably oh, these are these are extra blades. Okay, a whole bunch of extra blades, so we're just gonna leave those in there. And then uh, I like this here. So what the hell is that? So maybe it's. <laughs> <laughs> when you use this, uh, <laughs> it's got a, you know, it's got a pre-bozo bandage there for you. So uh, I don't know what. Uh, oh, maybe it was, maybe it was on this. They might have lost the lid for that. I bet you that's what it was. So, <laughs> but I looked at it and I go, well, hey, I've made plenty of things that look like that. So <laughs> anyway, a bunch of little parts in here, um, and then I think this little monkey here is. Um, an extender so you can extend this out um, and move the move the pivot way out let's see here pivot post hole yeah okay 12 inch so you can do uh, you can do rather large gaskets all right so there's the that's how it attaches up so uh, um, and then it's got a scale on it okay and millimeters and inches so you can just slide that along and then uh, and then cut that uh, cut the appropriate radius. So I've wanted one of these, but they're kind of like crazy, stupid, expensive, and uh, just to have around. So you end up do you know kind of faking it and doing it a uh, doing it a different way. But uh, when you find one at the flea market for ten bucks, you don't look a gift horse in the mouth, right? So. Yeah, I don't know what those are for. So I I have to read the instructions here and uh see what all the uh all the different different goodies are. Uh, what the heck is that? Okay. Anyway, so uh spearhead uh adjustable circle cutter, uh gasket cutter. So A bombs probably uses one of these all the time, so maybe I'll chat with him and uh get his uh get his two cents worth on uh, these because I know uh, in all that hydraulic, ouch! See, I need now. I need that. <laughs> I just <laughs> pinched myself there. In all that hydraulic work that he does, uh, they cut a lot of uh, kind of flange gaskets and things like that. So, okay. All right. All right. These are kind of neat here. Um, let's just do this one first. Get it out of the way. It's n n nothing magic here. Um, this is just a flexible uh, sanding backing pad that's kind of neat. I hadn't seen one like this before. But I have used these particular sticky rolls here. And uh, the way this one works is it's got a, a pad of, it's like felt or something like that. And what you do is you, you advance this out like so and then stick it down to the... Uh, that and it sticks real well and you just tear that off and Bob's your uncle and now you're off you're off and running again anyway it's got a nice big handle um, it's just nice and uh, I wanted it so I don't know it was a buck or something like that so now this one's kind of interesting here this is total old school here and what caught my attention is is Permacel and we used to use um, uh, Permacel and it was double back tape but it was it was the best double back tape that, that I've ever used. And I think that that particular product line has been bought out by Nitto, uh, N-I-T-T-O, a uh, Japanese company, a tape maker. Um, but uh, this is a sealed container made by Permacel. Um, and uh, it's you know, some kind of plastic tape in there. But what I thought would be interesting is, let's just go ahead and open this up and, uh, and see what it looks like inside let's see if I can find the, the leader here um, I might need oh. it's pretty crispy here I'm not expecting the uh, the tape to be in uh, in in good shape inside I just wanted to I was more interested in the uh, in the container uh, I don't know if this is going to peel very cleanly here Apparently not. Oh, it's kind of going. Oh, do I get a, oh, let's do this. Let's use a proper tool here, Mr. Wizard. Well, you guys 
are probably getting bored. Oops. You know what? Let me. Uh, I'm gonna crack this open here, and then uh, I'll come back. I don't. You guys don't want to watch me fumbling around with a knife here. So. All right. I think I'm pretty close here. One side's kind of popping up now. This is uh, this is real vintage. Let me just say that. I mean, I w if if you had smell o vision, you you could smell this thing. It's got a definite. Um, okay, here we go. The unveiling. Come on, baby. Whoa. <sighs> e nice. <laughs> Smells like melty vinyl. Um, well, <laughs> hmm. oh, look at that. That's a winner. <laughs> so, <laughs> actually, that'd be a good one. Um, all the uh, AMSR guys out there, right? How about this? Look at those tendrils, man. <laughs> well, needless to say, I don't think the uh, the tape tape's any good. Um, I don't think the tape's any good, but the little tin is kind of neat. I might uh, um, I might save that and uh, knock out the dents or tap out the dents, and uh, you know I don't know, put breath mints in there or something like that. Anyway, uh, total old school. Uh, Permacell uh, plastic tape container, so uh, uh, it's kind of like King Tut's tomb opening that up. <laughs> okay, so I saw this uh, this uh, book sitting on the um, the guy's uh, table there, right? And I said, "Oh wow, I've never seen that title. I don't. Uh, this looks like something I would be interested in, right?" And you know, if I saw this book at the uh, at a bookshop or something like that, I would I would definitely uh, take a crack it open and have a look. Well, I picked it up and I went, wait a second, that's not a book. It turns out that it's a uh, it's a little <laughs> it's a little lockbox safe thing, right? And uh, uh, this must come from Harbor Freight or something like that, made in China, uh, Bunker Hill safe. So they must have. So I guess I'm one of the only nerdy, uh, nerdy crooks or whatever that uh, would pull this off of your shelf to have a look at it and see what's in it. So, uh, <laughs> so I think they chose this title because nobody in their right mind would pick it up out of the bookshelf, and that's kind of the idea that it stays camouflaged. But I just thought it was funny myself that that I guess I'm geeky enough that this is the kind of book that actually attracts me. So uh, anyway, so don't, hey, don't hide your crap in, uh, in, a, in a box like this, okay? Not a good idea. <laughs> Look, see, we've got an author and everything. It's, it's, a, it's a riot. I just gotta, I gotta laugh out of that thing. So this is, a, this is the last of the flea market finds. And I had to, I had to lug this thing around the, around the flea market because uh, I found it fairly early. And it's not particularly heavy. Uh, it's just kind of an awkward shape to kind of carry, and my shoulders are killing me now. But some of you guys already know what this is. It's a little hoist. Um, it's a little, uh, you know, it's a little chain-operated hoist. Okay. Um, this has a 500-pound capacity. All right. And you see these. Uh, they're nice because it has a hand wheel and it doesn't have a, a chain fall chains over the over the load. So. Um, you see these on machine tools for changing chucks or vices, things like that. And basically it sits in a, a center pivot here. And then you can, you can swing it around. Um, and then they, they even have like an Aloris tool post mount that this will drop into the Aloris tool post. You lock it down and now you can take the chuck off and swing it off to the side and set it down. All very nice. Uh, now this was, I think, on a piece of uh, vacuum coating equipment. Uh, it's a local company here that, that makes uh, uh, chip processing equipment. So I think this was a part off of that and it's maybe for lifting the lid off of a, uh, uh, well, actually a load lock, uh, you know, a load lock thing for wafer processing. Um, but I had to buy one of these for work. 
uh, from this very company here. And let me tell you, it wasn't cheap. Uh, this one was cheap. This was 30 bucks, and that's a screaming deal. So what I thought I might do with this is I could make a bracket so that it goes onto the welding table. I could also make a bracket that went into the trailer hitch on the truck. Uh, there's, you know, there's enough possibilities with it. Uh, for example, I had to put a big piece of uh, stock up on the, uh, um, uh, the marble saw the other day, uh, 7 inch uh, 8620, right? So I had to roll out the engine hoist, fart around with all that stuff. Well, if this was, you know, on a bracket they could drop into the T-slot there, boom, I can just hoist that stuff up, swing it over, drop it on the side, Bob's your uncle. So for 30 bucks, it's, uh, it's definitely worth it. So I'll make some, some kind of universal bracketry for it so I can use it around. Now, you know, I have, a, I have a jib crane that I built in here, but it doesn't cover the whole shop. So, uh, um, so anyway, it goes up. And then to go down, you, you release it here, and then you, you pedal it down. And this is, goes up inside the tube here, or actually kind of coils up, uh, depending on how long the tube is. And this fits onto a 2-inch, um, you know, 50-millimeter stem, um, and then uh, it can swing around and uh, do its little job. So anyway, that was the last uh, flea market find. So keep your eyes open to possibilities when you're looking at stuff, and uh, and... Yeah. yeah, I mean, if I need to re resell it or whatever, I don't want to use it or it's not working out for me, uh, I'm not going to lose any money on it. So uh, that's the other way to think about that stuff. So, uh, hey, let's go look at some, uh, some scraping stuff. What do you say? Well, we've got, we've got scraping land over here now. And I, I went and took the, uh, the Richard King 50-hour uh, uh, scraping course. So it's scraping and machine alignment. Um, and, um, you know, a lot of guys have shot videos on this and people even ask me, hey, are you going to shoot a video on that? And I said, no, I'm not. And uh, I kind of didn't want to do a Me Too video. Um, I think that uh, um, what's important is to, for me at least, was to, I really wanted to learn the skills. And so I wanted to focus on learning the skills and not fussing around with video and trying to interview people and things like that. I really wanted to learn as much as I could from Richard. And, and I'll tell you, my opinion is that, uh, you know, yeah, you can learn to scrape on your own, okay? But the value of Richard's class is Richard, okay? He is a fountain of information. So, you know, you want to rebuild your little South Bend or your Bridgeport or whatever? Well, he's rebuilt hundreds of them. Okay, and I mean it. I mean hundreds of them. He's been, he, w he started as a kid with his dad in the 70s. So he's literally scraped hundreds and hundreds of machines all over the world, right? So yeah, scraping is, is one part of that, right? So that's the, uh, you know, after you do, and he calls it detective work, all the measuring and metrology and whatnot to figure out what's wrong with the machine, then you go in there and you do this corrective scraping, right? And sure, it's important that you do it correctly and all that, and, uh, and that you know you can make money at it and all that. But to me, the really valuable thing that uh, the knowledge that he possesses is all this machine alignment stuff, and he talked a lot about that. And um, and you know, I tried to listen. I took notes and um, wrote things down, asked questions. Uh, you know, he told a lot of. Uh, a lot of stories and uh, things like that and uh, and you know we told some of our own but to me that that's the, the value of that and you just you know when he's gone that's it all that those hundreds and or thousands of machines that he's rebuilt poof it's gone you don't get to see it anymore sure you can watch a scraping video but um, you know you know where to scrape and how much to scrape and how to check it to see if it even needs to be scraped right uh, you know, which side do you scrape, how do you put turf side on, you know, how do you put the grooves in turf side, you know, there's just a million things that uh, um, are siloed in his mind uh, that uh, you can extract as a student uh, in one of his classes. So if you have an opportunity, I totally highly recommend that you take his class. Um, you know, I think he's getting, uh, uh, <coughs> he calls it getting crabby. 
so he has less patience maybe than he used to have uh, with uh, uh, with folks. But uh, if you can kind of set that aside and uh, open your mind, you can really uh, get a lot of get a lot of learning from uh, Mr. Richard King. But anyway, so now I'm uh, I got the scraping bug. I got a bunch of scraping projects here that uh, we're going to take a quick quick look at, and then. Um, and then I'm going to show you a little tool that I made that was uh, um, part of a discussion that I had with Mr. Richard King. And, uh, and uh, he, he had seen something or uh, thought it might be a good idea. I, I don't quite remember now what he said, but uh, got me thinking about it. And then we'll take a look at that, too. So, so this was a little, this is a project that I brought to um, uh, the scraping class. Uh, one of several. You know, I didn't know how much time we were going to have. And... Um, in the class. So I brought this, I brought this little angle plate, and then I bought, brought this, uh, it's a dovetail uh, uh, straight edge, and, uh, and then I brought that, uh, that little 12 inch uh, surface plate that, uh, that I showed you earlier. So the bottom line is that, uh, you know, if you really focus and, uh, and try to extract as much learning out of the, the little test bars that he gives you, um, you will spend multiple days on those test bars uh, perfecting your technique and kind of getting the, the body mechanics of uh, how you scrape and what you're looking for and how you, uh, how you spot and, and all those things. So I started this and then and now I'm kind of just finishing it up here, uh, here at home. So uh, now this is one of the things that I want to show you. This is a, uh, a cheapo import uh, surface plate from Shars, and it's a it's a nine by twelve with a two ledge, and um, I'm going to be doing some lapping demos and clinics down at the uh, the bash this year, um, and um, so I figured this would be an easy one to transport. Also, it has this nice clamping ledge here that um, we could put the foil over and, and do some foil lapping down there and whatnot. Anyway, from Shars, this was twenty six bucks. Okay, can't believe uh, they sell it for that. Uh, and it's supposed to be grade A, uh, seems to be pretty good. Um, I had to put some uh, little feetsies on there. And those are just wood blocks, uh, plywood blocks that I put on with some uh, Loctite uh, 380. Um, you know, so it was sitting on three points. Um, and that's actually, that's something else Richard talks a lot about is uh, um, the art of, of three point. Um, you know, supporting machinery on three points so that you can you can measure and do your detective work and whatnot. So, uh, um, and then this is a, a cast iron angle that uh, a friend of mine, uh, uh, Andy at VPI, uh, uh, I said, hey, uh, you got any scraping projects I can take to the uh, the class? He goes, oh yeah, sure. And he bought one of these. Um, this comes from Core Print Patterns up in Canada. Um, they cast these and um, uh, for you know for 90 degree standards. So I, I lickety split, machined it, and got it ready to ouch. I got it ready f uh, so that I could quote unquote scrape it in the class. But uh, you know I, I didn't even finish this little angle plate. So uh, uh, I spent a lot of time on those bars and uh, messing around with the bars. So um, and then uh, I don't know they. You know, we could talk about scraping for hours. Um, the other thing that we played around with too is a, a different kind of spotting ink here, and um, this is a a artist product here, um, and it is a water soluble uh, printing ink um, that's very, very, very dark blue and almost uh, uh, stiff and greasy, kind of like regular old Dicum or. Uh, Permatex uh, spotting blue, uh, and we tried this in the class, and Richard uh, was very excited about it, and uh, I think they bought a bunch of it. So uh, uh, compliments to Mrs. Ox; uh, she uh, she turned me on to this stuff, and as you, it's darker blue than the uh, the canode stuff, so you can actually see it better. And I'll, I'll zoom in on that so you guys can see it, and uh, you can try it out if you want. Comes in all different colors, and it's water soluble, so when you get it on your hands, you can just wash it off. Uh, which is nice, or Windex cuts it too. So, okay. Anyway, uh, uh, let's let's look at the uh, the little. Well, actually, let's do a close up of this, and then we'll look at the uh, the tool that I made. All right. So these are these uh, these aqua washes here. 
um, and that we were using for spotting, uh, high spotting. Uh, and then I, you know, I got a bunch of different colors. So this is Prussian blue. Now Prussian blue is actually a color, guys. It's not actually a material. So uh, it's an artist color, and that just happens to be the name that. So it's a material in machinist world, and it's a color in art world. So, uh, and then here's uh, some yellow, uh, black, and then uh, some red. And uh, so, you know, you can highlight with this stuff. And I thought I'd try some black. And uh, but the value of this stuff is that it's uh, it's a little thicker, and um, um, and it's darker. the The colors are more uh, intense, so it's easier to see the it's easier to see the little uh, intense little spots. Actually, we let me open open the lid here, and you guys can get a get a. I mean, you can see the how dark blue that is, right? It's just gnarly. And you can thin it with uh, just the tiniest amount of water. You can thin it with if you want to thin it if it dries out a little bit. So aqua wash. Okay, so what I wanted to show you. Uh, so here's a variety of scrapers here. Um, you know, these are this is your traditional uh, Anderson Brothers here. Okay, it has a removable blade, and um, um, you bear down and you scrape. Okay. Um, so this is one of the things that you learn in the class is, you know, how do you control these, okay? Um, and then this is a, um, this is a DAPRA. Uh, I put a different handle on it, or a different, uh, different end, and I also thinned the, uh, the handle on it to make it a little more flexible. And then this is a power scraper blade here, so that, uh, you know, when you, when you put a little pressure on it, you get a little bit of spring to that and um, uh, it's less tiring to use although <laughs> it's still pretty tiring okay um, so that works pretty good too um, you know for uh, you know your your rough scraping you know what Richard calls paint scraping and then you got spot you got the X's which are individual scrapes with separation between them so so there's a bunch of different strokes and there's a bunch of different uh, types of scraping that uh, you use with hand scrapers right and then here's a here's a itty bitty little one that I did, and this has a little braised piece of carbine on it for doing the for doing little uh, little pinpointing stuff, right? Like so. Well, you know, when you got your magnifier on and you're you're trying to tense up and hold this thing and do these itty bitty little scrapes, right? Um, it, it gets a little tiring, right? And there's a when you're pinpointing, there's a little motion that you use and Basically, it's you're doing this, so you're kind of slapping your meat against that, right? Your hand meat, and you get a little beep, you get a little short little stroke, right? And that's how you control that uh, for pinpointing. But the ergonomics of this are not great because you're really trying to look here and do your little do your little your little thrust up there. Okay. So what I did was. I was talking to Richard about it, and uh, and anyway, basically what what I have here is a, this is a, a a prototype here, and what it is is it's a it's kind of like a slide hammer, okay, but it's got a brazed carbide tip on it, okay, and it's got some bumpers. So basically, when you're pinpointing, you bink, 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 bink. So what's interesting is is it's the stroke is very uniform and you can set the the distance here and the other neat thing about it is normally you would be like this trying to get over the top of this and look at it you can actually work from the side with this one so you can see the tip and where it is in relation to the uh, the, the blue spot that you're that you're you're trying to hit okay Anyway, this is me just pecking around on this uh, particular plate here. So anyway, this is a prototype. Uh, I kind of like it. Uh, I've been using it on the um, that little angle plate that I showed you earlier, but uh, um, I'll probably refine it a little bit more and keep keep messing around with it uh, um, and, uh, you know, see how I like it. Anyway, I wanted to show you that tool, and uh, that was inspired, inspired by a conversation I had with Richard King. 
and uh, and I said, hmm, that sounds interesting. I think I'll try it. So uh, um, here it is. Yeah, what do we call this? The ox pecker uh, or picker, nose picker. We need a name for this. So uh, uh, Richard calls this pecking uh, or picking. You know, you're picking all the little tiny blue uh, high spots. Uh, he calls it picking or pinpointing. So there's some different names for it. So we need a we need a cool name for the uh, the ox uh, the ox picker there. So okay. All right. This is a um, uh, new tool acquisition. This is a eBay find here, um, and what it is is you know we've been talking about laps and lapping you know for uh, lapping precision surfaces, and this is another kind of a lap. Uh, and it's kind of interesting. They're actually pretty nice. Um, they don't come up very often, and if you buy them new, they're they're relatively expensive. So, what this is is it's a diamond. Let's just take it out of the box here. And any anything that comes in its own wood box is uh, is pretty cool typically. So what this is is this is a diamond impregnated lap. So the surface of this um, has diamond abrasive that's that's permanently charged into this now. What's interesting about these is these are made out of aluminum. Um, you know, it's nice and thick, so it's stable and doesn't bend when you're processing a part on it. Um, oops, I got something on my hand there. Um, but they have a uh, some kind of plating, or uh, I'm not entirely sure of the process how they make these, but they basically plate diamond to the surface, and this is hard anodized on the, the rest of it here, so it doesn't scratch up and whatnot. And so you can, you can, uh, um, you know, you can lap apart on this, okay, and um, it gener it, they don't wear out. Uh, the abrasive eventually, you know, breaks down a little bit and, uh, and, and leaves the plate, uh, and they come in different grits. So this one is 12, 1200 grit, yeah, it's 1200 grit. I've got a couple of other ones that, uh, that I picked up. Um, this one's this one's 3,000 grit. A viewer sent me this uh, quite a while ago, um, and this one's kind of beat up, um, but uh, it's still it's still got decent areas here where you can you can work a small part or whatnot. And then um, the first one I ever got was was this little guy, and I got two of them in the same lot. And this is 600 grit, which is great. And these work uh, really good for, you know, you can make your own flat stones on them and things like that. So that's actually a good little family there. So you get four, six, and eight. So 600, 3,000, 1,200 grit. Now this company, they're still in business. Uh, you can call them up if you want. And, uh, but like I said, they don't give these things away. This is probably, I don't know thousand bucks or something like that um, they, they're not they're not cheap this is four or five hundred I think for something like that um, they do pop up on eBay this came up on eBay and uh, I bid on it and got it for a decent price um, you know a little higher than uh, you know hobby grade price I would call it but uh, I know what it is and and I have uh, plenty of use for it so uh, I was willing to pay a little bit more uh, perhaps to get it well that particular guy turns out had a couple of these and uh, some other people jumped on them too uh, uh, once, uh, once the price was established. So that's called an ab lap. There's other people that make similar things, um, but this is another kind of a lap and it's basically a permanent lap. So it's, it stays flat. These are very, very flat and you can lap to, uh, uh, you know, light band, um, light band flatness with these, a variety of parts. And it's kind of nice because you don't have to, uh, screw around with um, you know different uh, abrasive slurries and grits and things like that you basically lubricate these with a little bit of uh, uh, lapping oil or uh, lighter fluid or something like that and uh, um, and then you can lap an aluminum part you can lap a steel part you can lap a hardened steel part whatever you like and then you just clean the plate and then uh, you can switch materials and do that so pretty neat um, so a nice addition to the shop. We're going to use this one to actually lap the uh, the feet on the traveling uh, comparator base. I think is what we're going to do on this one. So we'll lap them initially on this um, to get them coplanar all the feet, and then uh, we'll do a little measuring on it and see uh, how the thing's tipping. 
and then we can differentially lap the, the feet to get it to uh, be perfectly perpendicular to the base. So uh, that'll be kind of a fun exercise. So that's coming up. Anyway, ab lap. Now, while I was standing there yapping about this, uh, this decal here, I saw this vice sitting over there. Uh, and I totally forgot about this. So this was a flea market find several weeks ago. Um, and uh, I hadn't, I didn't show it on the last meatloaf, and uh, I said, well, I'll go ahead and show it on this one. But uh, it actually, uh, I took this to the Richard King scraping class, and uh, it's got some duct tape or something in there. Um, and you know, to hold my uh, my cast iron bar, the, the the practice piece. Anyway, it's kind of a uh, a nice size vice, and it was 20 bucks, so you know, I wasn't going to pass it up for that kind of price. It doesn't look like it's been uh, used and abused, and you know, it's not all drilled out and, uh, and, and messed up. Now, it's a European style, which means the what would normally be the fixed jaw for us, uh, us Yanks is the moving jaw, but uh, that's okay, it doesn't, uh, we won't hold it against it. Um, but it it's uh, oh, yeah, look at that. Anyway, this is a good good size vise for um, you know a small um, bench top mill and whatnot. So this will end up going down to the bash and um, oh, it's even got a little uh, a little ball oiler right there. I haven't you know I didn't take it apart or anything like that, but uh, I think I did. I squirt some lube on. I don't even remember now. But uh, anyway, it worked out really nice, and like I said, 20 bucks, uh, uh, can't pass it up for that. So, uh, um, vice. And then my friend Carla gave me a couple of, she, she heard I was into lapping, so uh, she gave me a couple of lapping plates. And I haven't, I haven't seen any like this before. These are kind of unique. Um, it's got your, you know, your typical grooving and whatnot, but this material here so it's it's steel and it's got this is like it's almost like babbit or uh, or tin or something like that it's very soft okay so these would be these would be for lapping very very soft things okay um, so you always want your lap to be softer than softer than the target material so um, um, I don't know what what kind of materials they were uh, they were lapping these look like they're shop made you know the plates were ground at one point and then they either bonded or cast these cap pieces and, it, and attached them to them so i don't know how flat they are uh, they feel pretty good um you know there's no big uh big hangy burrs uh, sticking up or anything like that but they're very finely grooved and um Maybe it's some kind of automotive thing. I don't know. She, she uh, did a lot of uh, kind of automotive stuff. So these are just sitting on the shelf. And she said, oh, just, you know, if you think you can use them, just take them. And I, I said, well, I'll try them out. And um, so maybe we'll end up trying these on some, um, some really soft materials. So, uh, you know, like, like, there goes my scale um, or my ruler, depending on, uh, you know, what part of the world you come from. Um, the uh, what was I going to say? Uh, you might be able to, to lap something soft like copper on here and do a really nice job of that. So uh, um, anyhow, a couple of weird lapping plates, uh, and these are these are kind of a nice size here. You know, uh, they're uh, 150 millimeters, six inches by uh, by 230 millimeters or nine inches, and uh, like I said, steel backers, so they're nice and stiff and. Uh, so maybe we'll give those a go and, uh, and see how they behave.